Hi there, it's Mark from the Club 365 team again. In a previous video, we went through list item security, but in this one, I just want to show you the example of how you'd secure the entire list down so that only certain people can access it in the first place. But to explain that, it's worth going through how by default SharePoint works. So by default, if you create any list in a site and you do nothing else, that list will inherit the security settings and the permissions from the parent site. And that's called a security inheritance actually in SharePoint or permission inheritance. So if we take a look at this list here, so I've got an issue tracker list. I've done nothing to it apart from put some fantastic issues in. And we want to go and look at what permissions. So i.e. who can access this list? Let's take a look. So to do that, I'm logged in as a site collection admin, so I do have full control over the list. Let's go to list settings and then choose the option permissions for this list. Right, so you might want to make note here of what's happening. So you've got manage the parent, so that allows you to go and manage the security of the site in this case. And if you don't want to allow these three groups to access the list, then you need to stop inheriting because by default, these are site groups that are allowing people who are in them to perform certain things with inside the list. So for example, if I go and put somebody into the Mark site visitors list, they'll be able to read the list items, but they won't be able to edit them. Right, so let's just say you're in a, an, so for example, you're in an HR department and the whole company can access the HR because that's where you think you've got things like policies and procedures in there. But also you've created a list called salaries. Now salaries is obviously one of the things you possibly don't want every single employee to be able to see. So you might want to create a salaries list and then just break the inheritance at that point so that employees can't see salaries, but they can see everything else in the site and they might be able to see other, other um, lists. So the way you do that is you go stop inheriting permissions. Now SharePoint will pop up a message now Say you're about to create unique permissions for this list. Changes made to the parent site permissions will no longer affect this. So if we go and click OK. Right, now what's happened, it's, it's cloned the parent's security settings, but they're now broken, so the relationship's gone. So for example, if I didn't want people to be able to edit this, this I didn't want this group to be able to edit it, I could just remove the group. But if you want to be able to and the way you do that is you just remove user permissions. But for example, say you want to be able to add somebody from a payroll team. So let's say Fraser is part of the payroll team. What we can do is we can share this list with Fraser. And so we share that. And then let's just refresh this now. <coughs> so Fraser's now got access to the list edit and now let's just say we didn't want anybody else to have access edit access to the list so we could remove the entire group that's perfect so now phrase is the only one that can edit it all of the people inside of mark site owners can do full control over it and let's say we don't want anybody else to be able to read it apart from fraser and myself so there you go. So right now, if I was to show an invite with Fraser, and if he, if he was to hit the list, he'd be able to see the items and create new items. But nobody else inside of the entire company, unless they're in this group, Mark site owners, will be able to see that list. So we've effectively broken the inheritance. So if I can just show you that now, let's pull up another Chrome profile that I've got. So I'm logged on now as a separate account altogether. Uh, that's the Club365 account. Now Club365 can't see the list anymore, which is perfect. So and that's because if we go back here, Club365 isn't actually in a group. So what we could do is if we want to go here and do add users, and let's just say, let's put Club365 inside of the, oh, I can't find it. Let's have, I can't remember what his account name is. We've got a service account. Uh, there you go, it's the hello account. Share that with him. Perfect. So just going to log back in as the Club365. By the way, you should always use Chrome profiles if you want to be able to do demos like this, or you need to be able to test things out as different users. So 
if we just go back here, whoops, go back there and refresh that. All right, I need to pull up the whole site. Let's just, my browser history didn't help me there. Let's get rid of all that, press enter. Let's go to the issue tracker list and voila. So because I've added Club365 into that group, he can now access the list and he'll be able to edit and do everything that the permissions gave him in that part of that group. If you want to, then decide, actually, I don't want to break inheritance. What I'd like to do is be able to just uh, inherit from the parent again, which is the site. Then you just literally go delete, delete unit permissions. One thing I will say, because I worked in previous companies where they've had lots of lists and you do, if you keep breaking inheritance, it can become a bit of a, a permissions nightmare because you're not quite sure who's got access to what lists and it does become quite hard. So if you do generally have secure content that you only want people to see, then potentially it's better to have a site and then below that site, all of the lists that a certain group of people can access because if you've got Lots of lists in one site, it can become a bit of a, a maintenance nightmare. Anyway, I hope that helps. Uh, if you've got any questions whatsoever at all, just give me a shout. Bye.